Welcome to our demonstration of measuring metal powders on the Master Sizer 3000. Here we will cover both dry measurements using the Aero S dispersion unit, as well as wet dispersion measurements using the Hydro EV, the Hydro MV, and the Hydro LV dispersion units. First, for dry measurements, we can safely load our sample into the Aero S, which has a lid to protect users from any dust that might be produced during the measurement. We can then proceed to set up our measurement, using either a manually controlled measurement or a more automated SOP. Here we are using a manual measurement, which allows us to define our measurement settings before initialization by proceeding through the settings manager. Once all done, the measurement process can be initiated, first proceeding with automatic alignment and background measurements. The feed can then be started, and the measurements begin once the obscuration arrives in the defined range. At the same time, we can see the live scattering data and the particle size result of our metal powder. Metal powders are generally quite free-flowing, so an optimal feed, where the obscuration stays in range, is rather quick to achieve. The feed rate can be adjusted while here in manual mode, if more control is needed though. Metal powders also don't tend to aggregate too robustly in dry conditions, so a low pressure, in this case one bar, can be used to obtain a complete dispersion. It is a good idea, however, to carry out a pressure titration to establish this. Once the powder is depleted or the final measurement in the sequence is performed, the active measurement will finish. Results from individual measurements will be visible side by side each other on the trend graph at the bottom, which shows the sizes of the DV10, DV50 and DV90 percentiles. Finally, the cleaning sequence can be initiated and following that, the measurement window can be closed and the results reviewed. Size results can be viewed in different reports, including as overlays and trend graphs, both of which show the variance of the measurements by the relative standard deviation percentage values. The analysis report is also available, which provides further details. If a metal powder is less suited to dry measurements, a common reason being the need to keep sample usage to a minimum and possibly retain it, then wet measurements can be done instead just as easily. To do so, we can swap over the measurement cells and then connect our wet dispersion unit of choice, which in the case shown here is the Hydro EV. The Hydro MV or Hydro LV can also be used for the measurement of metal powders, with the main choice being down to the quantity of sample available to measure. When arriving at the sample addition stage, after the measurement settings are defined, it is possible to add the metal powder directly into the dispersion unit. However, this can result in poor obscuration control and may lead to the upper obscuration limit being exceeded. For greater control, the metal powder can first be wet with a few drops of the dispersant, in this case water, which creates a paste-like preparation. This can then be taken on the spatula and gradually added to the dispersant by watching the obscuration. The same method can be used for adding metal powders to the Hydro MV and Hydro LV. When the obscuration arrives within the defined range, the measurement can be started. Once the final measurement in the sequence is performed, the active measurement will finish. With this metal powder, measurements were carried out at increasing stir speeds, which is useful for establishing when complete dispersion of the material is achieved. Finally, we can take a look at a comparison of the results from the Aero S and Hydro EV, MV and LV. A low variance is observed, as indicated by the relative standard deviations. The same stir speeds were used for the three wet dispersion units, which produces slightly different dispersions of the metal powder due to differences in the tank designs. By using higher stir speeds on the MV and LV, the results could be brought even closer. In all cases, 
Once complete dispersions are established, the results can readily identify any outer spec material in the metal powder, whether through the percentiles or by looking at the percentage of results occurring above or below a certain size value.